What is going on everyone? This is Sean from All Things EV and I've just come back from a two-day Nikola Motor event in Scottsdale, Arizona and I've been anxious to get this video out and I know a lot of you who are watching have been very interested to see from my perspective what I saw and my opinion of it. So that's what this video is going to be about. Let's go ahead and jump in. This was a two-day extravaganza that Nikola held at an arena in Scottsdale, Arizona, and it began on a Tuesday evening where they introduced, in a very polished, professional way, I thought, especially compared to Tesla, five new vehicles. Yes, five new vehicles. So it wasn't just a semi-truck. It included the Nikola Wave, an all-electric water adventure vehicle, an autonomous, capable Nikola Reckless ATV for military use, Nikola NTZ off-highway vehicle, Nikola 2 Class 8 truck, and Nikola Trey, a semi-truck outfitted for the European market. I'm going to give you a high-level overview of all five vehicles, and at the end, I'll wrap it up with what I think the advantages of Nikola Motors are and their vehicles, as well as the upcoming challenges I expect them to have in the future. Let's dive in. They introduced a water sport vehicle called the Nikola Wave, and this thing looks pretty sweet. It's all electric, battery powered. It's got a very nice sleek design. The headlights look great. The taillights look great. It's got a cool little tunnel that they call bow to stern tunnel underneath the seat that you can put water skis in, or I guess anything else that you choose to put in there. And I think actually they're leveraging or taking advantage of the fact that there's no engine to take up that spot there. My guess is even though they didn't go into detail, the batteries are underneath the seat as well as underneath the bow and stern tunnel. Next, they introduced the Reckless ATV. This is a 775 pound feet of torque all-terrain vehicle. It gets 150 miles of range and a zero to 60 of four seconds. It's direct drive, quad motor producing 590 horses. This has a two hour CCS DC fast charge capability as well as level two and level one charging capabilities as well. It comes with a 125 kilowatt hour battery pack. And as I mentioned earlier, this is designed to target the military market. I'll get a little bit more into that in detail towards the end of this video, but this is one of the products that I'm most excited about for Nikola. Next, they revealed the Nikola NTZ OHV or off highway vehicle. This one as well has a 775 pound feet of torque, 150 mile range and a zero to 60 of four seconds. Direct drive quad motor producing 590 horses, two hour CCS DC fast charging, 125 kilowatt hour battery pack, a 12 inch ground clearance, seven inch instrument cluster, a 13 inch infotainment display, it's going to be able to take over-the-air software updates. The production begins in 2021 with a starting price of $80,000. This to me looks like the Nikola Reckless ATV and the NTZ were built off of the same platform, just marketing to different audiences. That Reckless marketing to the military and the NTZ marketing to the civilian audience. And then about an hour into the presentation, they finally introduced their first semi truck of the evening, the Nikola 2 Class 8 truck. This truck will be available in North American markets and it looks pretty cool. In fact, if you've ever seen the Tesla semi truck, <laughs> there, are, there are some similarities and that's probably a a, a another video for another time. I won't. I won't get into. I won't get into the legal uh, challenges that Nikola and Tesla are going through at the moment. 
this I wanna, I wanna, I wanna make sure and cover the specs here. So 2,000 pound-feet of torque, 1,000 horsepower, 500 to 750 miles of range. So it sounds like they're going to offer a couple of variants, a 13-inch instrument cluster and a 17-inch infotainment display. The rear wheels will have torque vectoring to give the driver ample control in any situation. It'll come standard with advanced hardware capable of active safety features, but they did make this clear in one of the presentations that it's just hardware. They're not going to be driving the software component, at least initially. They're going to let third-party suppliers take care of those active safety features. So this, to me, in my opinion, is a pretty huge distinction between the Tesla semi-truck and the Nikola 2. It will have a hydrogen version with an 80 kilogram tank, and it will also come with a battery version that will come in a 500 kilowatt hour, 750 kilowatt hour, and a one megawatt hour size. Production for this vehicle starts in 2022, and in the next video, I'm going to cover how the Nikola 2 and the Tesla semi truck stack up. So make sure that you're subscribed so that you get notifications when that video goes live. The fifth and final vehicle that they introduced was the Nikola Trey. And as I mentioned before, this is a truck targeted for the European market. It's going to have a 300 to 750 mile range. The hydrogen version will carry a 60 kilogram tank and the battery version will have similar options, a 500 kilowatt hour, 750 kilowatt hour, and a one megawatt hour option. Production for the Nikola Trey starts one year later than the Nikola 2 in 2023. Now, the interesting thing about these two semi-trucks is that they spent almost the entire time during the two events talking about the hydrogen variants. So aside from the three battery sizes that they'll offer for the electric variant, of these two vehicles, there wasn't too much more that they offered in terms of details. These two days were really focused on the hydrogen component, which in my opinion is definitely a foreshadowing for what's to come. I really suspect that they will focus and drive the hydrogen piece of this more than the battery size. And part of me wonders if that's because Tesla has a semi-truck that's focusing on the short haul. They did offer some additional details on leasing, and they say that their lease program will offer a million mile or 84 month trade-in, which includes the vehicle hydrogen fuel, as well as warranty and maintenance. They are guaranteeing a 90 cent per mile lease rate. If you know anything about the hydrogen charging infrastructure in North America, you probably are already aware that, that it's not that expensive. So it's nowhere near as expensive as electric vehicle charging infrastructure. So they've decided to partner together with a very well-known publicly traded Norwegian company called Nell, N-E-L, to help them develop this technology and get it out so that the infrastructure for refueling is more expansive. Nikola envisions a 15 minute charge time for their hydrogen fuel trucks. And they showed off this concept of this all-encompassing station where it will generate 17.6 megawatts of power per station. And they said, which I think is very interesting, that 40% will be renewable. So the other 60%, I'm guessing, is going to come from the grid, maybe? And they also talked about installing these hydrogen refueling stations at existing truck stops where truckers already go to refuel their existing semi-truck. So it seems like they're taking a similar strategy to Tesla in that in the early days, Tesla really leveraged other people's real estate, restaurants, hotels, malls, and so on to get their charging stations. And then you've sort of seen over time, Tesla has 
installed these larger stations like the one in Kettleman City, California, that has 40 stalls, solar on the tops of the roofs, and a cafe, and restrooms, and vending machines, and so on. So I think that Nikola is taking a very similar approach, and I would not be surprised if they start with the existing diesel truck stops to install their hydrogen refueling stations, and then over time, install these larger ones that are more encompassing. In fact, the picture that they showed not only had the processing of the hydrogen, the, the refueling stalls, but they also showed the picture of, of, of service centers tied to these uh, uh, big stations. And their plan is to install 700 stations, and they didn't clarify whether those are the big ones or the small ones, probably a mixture, by 2026. So here's where I think Nikola has some advantages. I think their CEO, Trevor Milton, definitely has the, the charisma and the onstage presence to be able to inspire people and to be able to attract investors and customers. And uh, that, that to me is, is a, one of the standout points of the last couple of days. I also like that throughout the last couple of days, Nikola was very intentional about communicating that they want to do away with diesel. They want to do away with the pollution that, that diesel semi-trucks create and that zero emissions is important to them. Now, I'll get to my one critique about this here a little bit later on towards the end of this video, but if they can execute on this mission of zero emissions and doing away with diesel, I will be supportive and a fan of it. As it stands right now, hydrogen appears to be better for long distances and long haul trucks than battery powered. That's at least with today's current battery technology. Batteries, lithium ion batteries are still pretty heavy, but I think that some breakthroughs are on the horizon for battery electric vehicles that may give Nikola and their hydrogen business strategy a run for their money. The other thing that I think is interesting is the refueling time. It appears if, if Nikola can execute on this 15 to 20 minute refueling time, they will have a leg up on Tesla's electric semi-truck as Tesla's specs stand right now. And when Tesla introduced their semi-truck back in November of 2017, they touted an 80% charge in 30 minutes. However, something tells me that Tesla is probably working on a faster charging that will improve that to 15 minutes for an 80% charge. Now let's get into some of the challenges that I expect Nikola to face. Now the first and, and glaring one I think is this lack of hydrogen infrastructure throughout North America and throughout the globe. Now I've got to admit that at the time of this recording I have not looked at Europe's hydrogen refueling infrastructure, but when I look at North America's it is not very dense. In fact, when I pull up the North American refueling infrastructure on the U.S. Department of Energy website, they indicate that there is only 47 public hydrogen refueling stations. The other challenge I expect Nikola to face is having enough capital to drive five new products and the cost to build out this refueling infrastructure. If you know anything about new vehicle programs, you understand that just one vehicle alone costs billions and tens of billions of dollars to get up off the ground and into customer hands. Five at once? This is one concern of mine when I look at this. In fact, as I was watching the company announce vehicle after vehicle on the first evening, it actually got really confusing to me to keep track of everything that they were doing and the differences between them. I spent quite a deal of time after this event going through, making sure that I understood the differences between them, which ones were battery powered, which ones were uh, hydrogen, and which ones offered both options. Ultimately, execution is the game, and if Nikola can execute on five new products at the same time, good for them. I, I, I just think that it will be a significant challenge, and I wonder if they might table some of the smaller markets like the water sport and the off-road vehicle 
to maybe later because I really do think that the uh, semi-truck and the military vehicle are their best options for revenue in the short term. I think the military side of things is definitely appealing. If the military buys any of these vehicles, whether it's the reckless off-road vehicle or whether it's the semi-trucks, hydrogen or electric are going to be far less expensive than the diesel that the military uses to power their vehicles. In fact, as I understand it, the cost of diesel, military diesel, is around $600 per gallon, and that includes them shipping that diesel from wherever they store it to their installation. So anything that's not diesel and can be reliable and quick to refuel, I think the government is going to be extremely interested in, whether that's hydrogen or whether that's battery electric. And the commercial potential of their semi-trucks alone could be enough for them to become an incredibly successful and profitable company. So if they decided not to, to focus on the military side and just focus on the commercial potential of hydrogen semi-trucks, I think they're gonna be good to go. If they, if, if they can build out some of these other things like the refueling infrastructure, that's gonna be key. All right, that wraps up this recap of the last couple of days with Nikola Motors two-day event. I hope you enjoyed it. I would love to hear your comments down below. What do you think about these vehicles? And do you think that they'll face some of the challenges that I am expecting? Sound off down below and make sure that you keep an eye out for the next video where I compare Nikola 2 to the Tesla semi-truck. I really think you'll like that one. Sean Mitchell, All Things EV. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing. If you're a regular, hit the like button, and I'll see you on the next video.